Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester four, routing and switching, connecting networks. This is chapter eight, monitoring the network. Chapter eight is separated in three sections. We have section 8.1, syslog, then 8.2, SNMP, and 8.3, NetFlow. This is section 8.1, syslog. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain syslog operation in small to medium sized business network, configure syslog to compile messages on a small to medium sized business network management device. Introduction to syslog. Monitoring an operational network can provide the network administrator with information to proactively manage the network and to report network usage statistics to others. Link activity, error rates, and link status are a few of the factors that help the network administrator to determine the health and usage of the network. When certain events occur on a network, networking devices have this trusted mechanism to notify the administrator with the detailed system messages. Now, these messages can be either non-critical or significant messages. Popular destination for syslog messages include login buffer, RAM, this is inside the router or switch, console line, console line is a default. So any, if you ever have configured any router or switches, for example, once you enable the interface, the interface no shutdown, then you see a message. That is the syslog message. Default, you're gonna send you're gonna see all the messages in the console line. We can send them we can send them to terminal line. So for example, if we are connected through uh, Telnet or we are connected through SSH, we can enable the syslog messages to appear there. So if you ever connected to Telnet and do interface no shutdown, you might not see you will not see a syslog message because syslog messages are not enabled by default on terminal lines. They're only enabled on the console lines. What we really like to have is a syslog server because, for example, if we send the messages, if we leave it, leave it to default and all the messages are only going to the console line, now you have to physically be able to be connected through the console port on that switch and look at the screen to see the messages as they're coming in. But in production, that's not, that's not possible because you're going to have more than one switch to manage and you might have a few routers and so on so, and you're not going to be able to look at them all of them at the same time so we do want to send them to the syslog server well we compile them nicely there and then we should be able to read them at our own time it is possible to remotely monitor system messages by viewing the logs on a syslog server or by accessing the device through telnet ssh or through the console port syslog uses unreliable protocol UDP port 514 to send event notification messages across IP networks to event message collector. So unreliable protocol 514. Syslog messages, catalyst switches can be configured to generate an audit trail of messages describing important events that have occurred. For example, the first thing we have is a timestamp. Well, the one that is not displaying is the sequence numbers as well, but as you can see there on the screen is a timestamp the date and time from the internal switch clock so it's not going to use a you can set it up you can modify this to use the actual clock but by default it's going to use the internal clock since the device was booted and then we have the facility code a system identifier that categorizes the switch function or module that has generated this the message the facility code always begin with a percentage sign then we have a severity level, a number from 0 to 7 that indicates how important or severe the event is. A lower severity means that even the event is more critical. Then we have a mnemonic, a short text string that categorizes the event which the facility, facility code. Then we have a message text, a description of the event or condition that triggered the assistant message importance or severity high to low so we start with low so very low severity is debugging that's level seven 
debugging output. The next one is informational, level six. Here, for example, VTP messages, uh, VLAN trunking protocol, Spanish tree protocol, unidirectional link detection, ARP inspection. These are the informational messages they create level six. Then severity five is notification. For example, DTP, ether channel, if there's a problem with it, inner inline power, DTPs, as we can see twice there. Then severity of four, which is warning, is DHCP snooping, for example. Then we have severity of three errors. Here we have an ACL issues, TCAM issues, PACP problems. Then we have severity of two, which is critical. This is the hardware issues, for example, port securities and so on. Then severity of one, here are alerts, platform errors, and then severity of zero, which is the highest or most important severity. Emergencies, here we have crashes, stop of stop process. For example, if we are monitoring and we enable severity of four, we're gonna see everything le lower to four as well, including four. So we're gonna see severity zero, level zero, level one, level two, level three, and level four. If we enable, like for example, syslog severity of seven, we're gonna see all the log messages. So for example, if the syslog severity level is set to critical, severity level two, the switch will generate messages in the critical, alert, and emergency levels, but nothing else. By default, system messages are sent to the switch console port at the debugging level. You can change the console severity level with the following command, login, and then console, and then severity. So by default, the internal login buffer is disabled. To enable it and begin sending messages into the buffer or RAM, you can use the following command, login buffered, and then severity level. And you can set the login buffer size, how, low, how much you want to use of that RAM for buffering. For example, this is a sample of syslog messages. So for example, if we enable the IGRP and we have a new adjacency, we see a syslog message. So first we have a timestamp, then we have a facility code, which is Joule has generated this message, the severity of five, then we have memonic, this is neighbor change, like a small description what it is, and then we have a message text, EIGRP IPv4, uh, process ID of one, we have a new neighbor. Set in the internal system clock, each Cisco switch has an internal time clock that runs continuously without any intervention. Example, show clock, we can see the clock. In the following example, the switch is configured for the British summertime zone in the UK, and the clock is set for 3.23 p.m. As you can see, clock set, then the time. If no other parameters are given within the clock, summertime recurring commands UK daylight seven time is assumed. Clock time zone, GMT zero, and clock summertime, we can see the reoccurring. Syslog operation service timestamps. Log messages can be timestamped and the source address of the syslog message can be set. This enhances real-time debugging and management. The service timestamp log daytime command entered in global configuration mode should be entered on the device. To allow the software clock to be synchronized by NTP time server, use the NTP server IP address command in the global configuration mode. So for example, like I said earlier, the timestamps are just gonna be the, the clock since the device was switched on. Not very useful. But if you wanna use the actual the clock where the syslog message is gonna come from, you need to enable this command service, timestamp, and then log data, date, time. If you wanna synchronize your time with an NTP server, for example, you need to make one of the servers to be, one of the devices to be your NTP like source of the, of the time. So that device is gonna be called NTP master. For example, router two is our master. And then we go to the clients and we say NTP server, then the IP address of the server, and those two devices that will synchronize a clock. Syslog server, the Syslog server provides a relatively user-friendly interface for viewing Syslog output. The server processes the output and places the messages into predefined columns to easy interception. 
If the timestamps are configured on the networking device's source and the syslog messages, then the date and the time of each message displays in the syslog server output. Then the network administrator can easily navigate the large amount of data compiled on the syslog server. Default login. By default, Cisco routers and switches send log messages for all severity levels to the console. On some iOS version, the device also buffers log messages by default. To enable these two settings, use the login console and login buffered global configuration command. So to set the router and switch commands for syslog client, so step one is to configure the destination host or IP address of the syslog server where you have installed that syslog server. So you send in login, so we send in logins to 192.168.1.3. We are sending log messages to this server. Then step two is control the messages that will be sent to the syslog server with the login trap level global configuration mode command. So for example, login trap four, or you can write in the, with a warning. So login trap warning, for example, if you want to see level four traps. Step three, optionally, you can configure the source interface with a login source interface interface type interface number global configuration command so for example you can configure the interface who's going to send these syslog messages from so for example if you enable in the firewall that, that interface will be able to talk to the syslog server then you need to identify what interface is going to be sending show login include change state to up for example um, show login you can see it from some search some date as well that's to, ver to verify the syslog server. Thank you very much for watching this section 8.1 syslog. Please have a look, have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astro Krasnichi. Next video 8.2 SNMP.